Welcome to Rauta, and this time it's time to talk about some classic Finnish black metal. Now, many people you know Horna, that is Horna, I would guess the pronunciation for English-speaking people is, and um, as it was, uh, Horna got its um, few releases, got re-released, reissued in uh, 2019, towards the end of the year. However, it took a little bit of time due to the massive queue here, to get these babies under review. So what we have here is two releases called Haudan Kylmyyden Maila and Hiden Torni. And um, you're probably quite aware that this is some of the early works by Horna. I'm gonna use the Finnish version now on because that's the proper way with the rolling R Horna, much like Rauta. I hope you get it. But don't, don't sweat about it. If you cannot pronounce it, it's totally fine. I guess Horna and all that stuff will be quite okay. So we'll st start with uh, Hiden Torni, actually, because this is the first one in chronological order. As you can see, this is Woodcut Records reissue. This has been actually, throughout the years, been uh, released by various labels in various formats. But since this is the Woodcut version, we cannot just get through it. Now, Hidden Dorn means roughly like a Tower of a Goblin. Uh, easy, which is the main word here, is just like uh, bound to make Hidden when it's like uh, like Jerry's, you know. My things, easy. Okay, well I get it. And um, Torni means tower. It's like Tournet in uh, Norwegian. That is like, for example, Dark Throne used. So Hidden Torni, Goblin's Tower, Tower of a Goblin. Here it is, um, the inlay image. And here we have Shatraug, the main guy of Horna. The only original member of the band anymore, by the way. And here we have this track list. As you can see, all the lyrics and the song names are in Finnish. It starts with Avaus here, which is roughly the same as Introduction. And we have songs like Kun lyömme Jumalan kodin liekkeihin When we strike God's home in the flames Ikuisesti kalpeana kuoleman muistossa Forever pale as the memories of death Hidden torni huoku usvansa Goblin's to uh, tower was Kind of a breathing out It's fog Tappaka Christus kill the Christ Sanoista pimeyteen from words to darkness And then synkki myrskynsä His dark storm Hornan väki, people of the abyss, and sinulle mätänevä Jehova, for you, rotting Jehovah. So pretty fa uh, f forward, in your face, kind of a Nordic black metal, very much the 1990s stuff when Horna was created. Already in more than 25 years in the making, uh, this band has since progressed and changed quite a lot. For example, Moredhel hasn't been part of the band for so many years. Nor has Nazgul, later on as Werewolf of Satanic Warmaster. He used to be in Horna quite a few years, being kind of the frontman, the vocalist of the band, and so forth. Also, we have Gorthard, the ex drummer of the band, who hasn't been in the band for that long anymore. And Shadrach, the main man, the guitar player, the songwriter. Also, some parts of bass and keyboards are on the run. So, that is Hidden Torni, how it looks. Now we're going to take a little bit of a look at Haudan Kylmyyden Maila, which is something like uh, around the lands of uh, grave coldness. Kind of a weird way to translate it because it's not really that translatable. Here is the uh, inlay image of this one. As you can see, prologue, which is intro. Then we have epilogue, which is outro. And then we have track called War, Sota. And Yhdeksätyö, Ninth Night, Jesuksen Veresta of Jesus' Blood. Well, I don't know if it makes that much of a point to translate. If you want to ask these translated, I'm going to put them on the comment field below. Let's just move on with the video, or otherwise this will take 20 minutes. And here's the CD. As you can see, this is edition 2011, but now reissued here in 2019. And here is the cover, which is kind of nice, like old book, having this kind of a lock. And the cover is like from old book with Horna logo. And once again, we have some lyrics here. We have the lineup mentioned. We have the old um, email address. These might not even be valid. So I don't know. I don't think these have been updated. I don't know if the email address works anymore. 
And of course, because it's old edition, there is no information about Black Band's Facebook page or stuff like that. So this is very much Horna late 90s. Now, those of you who are not like uh, aware how Horna used to sound back in the late 90s, mid 90s, it was very, very Nordic style. Some people were actually mocking how they took parts from bands like Dirt Heim's Card and stuff like that. So it was like very much like Norse score made into Finnish mold. That is black metal, the Nordic style, kind of a golden green riffs, not gold, but cold. And uh, also uh, the kind of uh, sound is not exactly necro, but it's very raw, kind of a thin, not very well produced, but then again, very, very fitting for the music as well. So in very many ways, kind of a traditional 1990s black metal, maybe not the most original or unique out there, but very much fitting the rest of the flock, so to speak. Now, Horno has been always quite active band and they have actually made almost 50 releases by now and only a few of them, like one fifth roughly, are full length albums. So early on they were like doing demos and stuff, split ones and uh, album would appear every now and then. And this beginning is now different. It's kind of a funny to understand that Heathen Torni, for example, um, it's 40 minutes long, so as a demo, it's like twice the normal standard, you know, length. So it totally works fine as a full-length album as such. And uh, like the covers and all that stuff, this is very, very traditional, if you think, uh, 1990s black metal. Black and white, first of all. Very simple design, just logo, name, and all that stuff. And then you have this kind of atmospheric image, which is basically forest, tree line, and then some sky. Now, this is not exactly the, you know, like photography of the year when it comes to nature photographies, but I mean, it's the very essence of how things actually look like so many times. So not exactly award-winning in the terms of being uh, original and stuff, but then again, very, very fitting to kind of underline this Nordic climate and the kind of a mindset as well through that. But that is not uh, to say that this is not like a fearful band, like going green metal and stuff, because Horno has since like basically since day one been all about anti-Christian, anti-Christ, killing gods in so many ways, killing Christ, killing the people of Jehovah, all that stuff that is figuratively speaking, not in the terms of like world war stuff. So Horno has been always kind of a repeating their pattern, you know, all about being very, very traditional anti-Christian metal. And I think as such, the black metal is both quite good in, and also very traditional in the terms of how the riffs are made, how the lyrics are made and all that stuff. Now, in my opinion, Hidden Thorn is definitely among the less, less good albums when it comes to Horna. And then again, that could be said because it's not really a album, but it's more like a demo. So, um, it's kind of understandable that the band wasn't exactly with their best edge, so to speak, uh, but they were just kind of a figuring out their own style and, you know, figuring out how they want to do it, how, which kind of riffs they want to do it. So it's somewhat melodic, somewhat raw, and very, very much like their own version of what Norwegians and Swedes have already been doing with the black metal. And I must say, even though it's not a bad album by any means, and it's it's way beyond just being mediocre one, um, Hidden Thorn is, my opinion, among the weakest ones. It's more like a kind of a nice glimpse of what this band was back then, rather than being actually a really good album. There is one track which I think is really solid, though, which I now must mention, is the kind of a title track, Hidden Thorn Huokus, the track number four. Because it has really kind of a catchy and memorable riff where the bass actually uh, brings so much more power to it. But other than that, you know, the vocals are not that good. They're totally nice, but far away from that point where Werewolf, or back then Nazgul, would have gone later on. So um, that is kind of a starting point, but not that good one. Now, How to Get Myla is basically the same style, but it's over 60 minutes uh, long and it's basically just a little bit too much in my opinion because the thing here is the material is not strong enough to support fully this length. Also the kind of epilogue track here, the outro track if you will, is like too many minutes of this 
kind of a B grade dungeon synth. That is the thing, funny thing here that because this is very much like 1990s release, both albums albums feature the outro, which is kind of like B grade Morty. It's kind of a simple uh, keyboard music, which is not that good. You just might feel inclined to just skip it and move to the black metal right away. And this Howlin' Gilmore and Myla just kind of annoys me because it's lengthy dungeons in track, which is then followed by Sota, which is then again a good track. So if I could be just a little, a little bit of editing, I would just remove the intro and epilogue outro track and just go on with the black metal because 60 minutes plus with this kind of a rawish black metal is just too much when the song material is not that good. So it's kind of a given at this point that I am not really favoring this early Horna stuff here too much. I mean, it has its point as the 1990s black metal, but is it really that good? when you compare it to later years with the newer lineup and all that stuff, I think it's very much work in progress. It's nice to get back to this kind of stuff every now and then, but is it really good? Not that good. It has its time and place and all that, but still, if you would go only for the selected best pieces by Horna, I would say go towards 2000s Horna material and you're better to go as much as I like Nazgul's vocals on this one, for example, they are not to save the album. Anyway, those are the kind of uh, classics. I use quotation marks because I don't think they're that good that they would be considered as classics in the same way as like early Dark Throne or Emperor or Sadrigon or whatever. But they do have their place, like said. So uh, if you have missed some early Horna or Hona works, you might just want to click those links and Go for some listening, some early 1990s or mid-90s Horna material, and there you have it. Thank you for watching this lengthy review. Hope you have a good time with Horna, and if not, at least go to see them live. They're a good, solid live band, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you soon.